Gibson is taking a break. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogley's Guitar Show. It's time for that weekly mod collection demo shop update. But if you were shopping this week, you might have noticed something strange at the top of the Gibson website. They're saying all orders within the next week will experience some minor delays. And if you head over to the demo shop, everything is listed as a pre-order until April 10th. Now, what's the reason for that? I believe Gibson is doing inventory, because I remember this happening about a year ago as well. I suppose waiting for orders to ship is much better than the alternative. They take an actual break and not give us cool guitar guitars every week. But let's go ahead and explore the mod collection. Starting with a gorgeous Explorer Custom in what they called Regal Plum. It really reminds me of the Sugar Plum Fairy Les Paul that I documented in this episode. It even has the matching light purple binding, the dark finish, it likely has a nice metallic nature to it. You've got the gold hardware with the speed knobs. It's got the matching headstock, and if there was binding on the headstock, they probably would have gave it the light purple treatment too. Now we didn't get any fancy stingers or anything like that, but the entire back was also refinished. Pretty much the only potential downside to some guys is it was a satin refinish, rather than the gloss. But that was very tempting at 4700 that sold within minutes. But next to that one, this was my favorite Les Paul listed this week. They called it Country Sunset, and it's a lefty standard 50s. But my goodness, that top with that finish is sublime. Awesome. Love it. I don't play lefty, so I didn't need this guitar. But this hue with the cream plastics works remarkably well, especially with that nice dark fretboard. Now, the headstock was pretty basic, just sans the Les Paul model silkscreen. And they left the back of the guitar a satin finish. But this next custom has a funny name, Extreme Marine, which looks like a really dark navy blue. And then we got the black chrome hardware with zebra pickups. I think black chrome pickup covers would have looked pretty good too. And black speed knobs. But nice, we've got the Cluson style tuners, kind of harkening back to the 50s, though just not the exact same style. And it was a complete refinish. To be fair, that was a $500 discount for a custom finish, of course it sold. And then this one, I deserve a commission paycheck on. <laughs> It's a Les Paul Custom Access. So the very day prior to this, somebody contacted me wanting to do a new Guitar Day purchase of one of the Bangle Burst Les Paul Access Customs. But they were a little bit worried about how long it would take for Gibson to make one. And I told them, yeah, we could do it, but you might be waiting quite a while for a brand new one. They drop these things all the time in the mod collection and demo shop, which unfortunately my NGD process is not available with those guitars. But you're gonna save at least $1,000 and get it almost instantaneously because it's almost every week they drop one of these. So bad business move on my part, but I'm here to give the best advice possible. So this thing showed up the very next day and I sent them the listing and I said, hey, if you don't mind the satin finish, here you go. Here's a thousand bucks off, essentially. Besides the satin finish, this one became really dark. I wonder if they sprayed a little bit of extra black down here, or maybe that's why it ended up in the mod collection in the first place. But it's got a P94 pickup in the neck with a regular humbucker in the bridge and all the black hardware. And I always feel like a mod collection guitar, you don't have to be as scared to modify it any further. So if he didn't end up liking those pickups, he could easily swap them out into something else and not feel as bad because it's already been messed with. Looks like the truss rod cover is slightly off center. But to be perfectly honest, I really love satin finish access customs. Like for example, the 2017 Gibson Rhino Les Paul Access. The factory flat finish feels so great on those because these are hyper modernized guitars. They've got the super heel carved back here. They even have a comfort cut back there. I can't comment how this particular one will feel, but I have enjoyed access customs in the past with this style finish. So I hope they enjoy their new guitar. Next, we have Mara Goldenrod. Reminds me of Goldenrod City from Pokemon, but we've got an interesting grill cover over here and then what looks like another P94 down there. Ha, huh, that's interesting. Usually you see those in the neck if they're gonna keep a humbucker somewhere, but that's a really bright yellow finish. It does remind me of a flower. And you've got that same thing going on with the back, but maple is a lighter wood, so it's going to make the yellow finish look like that. Now, had they had finished this neck in that same yellow color, I don't think it would have looked good because do you see what's strange about that neck? It's multi-hued. It's very pale looking in this area. So even though it's got a mahogany like finish over top of it, you can see the stain didn't quite stick in those areas or color it in the exact same way. So the yellow probably would have made that even more apparent. But wow, that one actually sold. Usually the semi hollows take longer to find a buyer. But next we have Fathalo Blue Sparkle, I think. This is a lot more my style. Again, it's a nice dark blue. You've got the shining chrome, witch hat knobs even. Then they go all out painting your headstock. Then the back got painted as well, but here's what I was just talking about. The finish appears lighter on the maple body versus the mahogany neck. This photo right here really shows you how much of a color shift that finish is going to have in person. The heel is still painted blue, but the neck almost has that black look. I'm surprised that one's still available at the time of recording. 
but they must have spring fever for yellow guitars. It's Whoa Yellow Satin. I'm not sure if that's a reference to something, but it just looks like they took regular Les Paul Special, gave it cream pickup covers. Yeah, unfortunately, that one's not winning a beauty contest if I was the judge. But who am I to discourage this yellow beast? Someone fell in love with it. But if none of the previous yellow finishes did anything for you, how about A70's Flying V in Mountain Gold? Out of the ones we've seen, I think it works the best. Kind of reminds me of a bumblebee. You've got the dark gold and the black. That's pretty piercing, especially with Dirty Fingers pickups in here. Wow. Did you know Dirty Fingers pickups actually came out in the late 70s, not the 80s like most people think. And some of the first models to get them were semi-hollows. But a cool matching headstock extra bonus of a government green flying V case and a complete refin really seals the deal. Looks like we have a little bit of St. Patty's left with Green Pea Satin 70s Deluxe. When I first saw this, I didn't think it was one of the deluxe models, but it is. They just replaced the mini humbuckers with P90s, which is something you can do. But looking closely at that, those are slug coil P90s, so it's probably a P90S or similar pickup. But ha, huh, they just called it regular P90 pickups in the description. There's definitely a little bit more to that story. Those are not regular P90s. But then we've got our tortoiseshell pit guard with your ambered over knobs, gold hardware. I like this one. It works. Looks like we've got a brown backplate, a tortoise backplate, and just an ebony finish. But there we go. We got a side profile shot. This is what I love when you mix black and green. And then you've got that cream layer in between. That's what you see when you're playing. And it looks like the neck is going to have the ebony finish. That's going to look great in person. But how about this weird thing? It's an SG Special. They just said natural satin, but they modified our pick guard to kind of this, would you call it a flowery like design? Since we're kind of in the mood for spring, it's a nice dark cherry satin finish. You've got a black wrap tail now with a regular P90, and then they threw a Firebird in the neck position just for fun. Might as well put the old style Gibson logo on it. All we're really missing here is like some pinstriping on the back or something. I actually really appreciated that design, but I wouldn't pay that price for it. But we had another one. I think this is what, the fifth week in a row? The pearlescent paint being called Blue Pearl Wine Satin. So it's a lefty Les Paul studio light guitar. And basically they just took a wine red one and put the blue pearlescent paint over top of it so it'd have that color shift effect. Turns out pretty cool. It appears they even did it to the headstock and maybe even tried to give you a little bit of a burst finish on your neck. And then lastly, out of the mod collection, we have Savory Scarlet. It's got a really heavy flame right here in a reverse chevron style. But then you have a more semi what normal flame top over here. And then you get a little bit of waviness there. It's an interesting top with your P94 in the neck. That was definitely a running theme this week. Throw P94s and everything. But it's got a nice dark fretboard. And ooh, nice natural back. So maybe not the most exciting week we've ever had out of the mod collection, but let's see what the demo shop was up to. Had you had tuned into the Tuesday release, they actually did continue the 15% off sale that Reverb was doing on those new listings. And to that new Guitar Day inquirer's dismay, they actually had an access custom the day before they were looking for it. It was actually $100 cheaper than the one that they had bought, and it was 15% off. And what bugs me is I almost bought this because I was like, ah, that's just a pretty good deal. I need to review this color eventually because we talk about it all the time here. But this one was pretty all right with a mild flame top and a gloss ebony back and came with a Lifton style case. Another one on sale for a pretty good price was this 60 standard hand select top. You could tell that one would have some good travel in person. But since I already have a couple of these in my shop on my website, troglisguitarshow.com, I decided I didn't need another one. This 50 standard had the voodoo style pickups in it. I don't think that color combination works for this finish, but whatever. But this was pretty slick. So it's another access custom, meaning you get all this cool stuff on the back. But it's the version with the Floyd Rose and this non-exposing pole piece cover with the uncovered dirty fingers and the bridge. I don't know, it just looks kind of like a sustainer pickup or something. Kind of like the Neil Sean signature of the early 2000s. So if that red and black on the Cherry Sunburst wasn't necessarily to your tastes, you might enjoy this one that's still available. It's a white Les Paul Custom that they put white pickup rings on and had the white and black bobbins. This one works, but that's about three weeks in a row we've had monochromed madness going on. But it's a cool look. I like it. This SG Special looked a little bit lighter in color than normal, but I think it's just the photo style. Maybe something wasn't quite set right on the camera. But I liked the wood grain on the back. It's very chaotic. This tribute made me laugh. Something about it reminds me of a cat. I think it's these flame lines right here. They look like little whiskers. Other than that, I guess you could say you got a little bit of Ace Fraley vibes to it. But this standard 50s has a hilarious goof. So the top's all right. The back's pretty standard. But if you flip through all these photos, hey, what's that in our binding? It's an employee's hair. Yeah, that happens occasionally. I think we've seen it three or four other times within the demo shop. I've also at least seen it once on a Sweetwater demo guitar. 
Because imagine, think back to the early 90s of Gibson, if you had documented Tom Murphy hair on your Murphy painted guitar. You can bet your butt crazy collectors would pay a premium for that kind of stuff. But the standard 50s had an interesting flame top, pretty mild, and then you get some sort of a little ghostly figure almost over here. And some nice wood grain. I just always like that color. It looks great in person. This one had a little bit of a darker border to it in a more traditional look, but I like the wood grain on the back. But this was a hand select top. It is pretty nice, but the reason I wanted to show you guys this one actually is the nut. Why? Why is that so strange looking? It's very common to have a diagonal line of clear lacquer over a Gibson nut. People think it's a cracked nut all the time, and they make a big hubbub about it on guitar forums, but no, it's just clear lacquer. And it is common to have some finish over top of the edge of your nut, but how it got there and not here is a little bit of a mystery but hey that's why it's in the demo shop but this lp classic kind of made me question should it even have been in the demo shop i mean it's got nice wood grain and everything and there's a little bit of unevenness right here but the seam line is extra visible on the back of this one which sometimes that can happen when they don't quite get the join right and seam lines will naturally kind of form as the guitar ages but to have it brand new and at that price i would definitely suggest paying just a little bit more to get a brand new one trust me stuff like that really hurts the resale value because everybody's scared the whole body's gonna come apart even though most times it probably won't and then by far my favorite top this week was this one perfectly uniformly flamed and an awesome color. But let's go ahead and check out the European side of things. There's nothing too jarring, but they did have a 68 reissue gold top, which you can check out this review and demo if you need to learn more about them. This is one of the unlimited production versions though, not one of the 2018 limited editions. But it's got the crown on the headstock due to a typo on Gibson's end before they fixed it. Back in the late 60s, not on the reissues. But the demo shop also had a regular Ebony Access Custom. They didn't modify it. Wow, that one's from 2017, so you're going to have the Rich Light fretboard. They had one of the Epiphone USA casinos. Then strangely enough, they listed brand new KRK Go Aux 4 Studio Monitors. So this one sold as a pair for 500 bucks. I'm not sure if that's a good deal or not. Then they also had these slightly smaller ones at 425. Gibson must have a stock of their KRK products over in the European side of things that they're going to use this as the outlet to sell it on. All right, Jogglerites, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.